Sports Desk. This is a signing day update. I'm Jenny Carlson and this is Ryan Aber. And with us on the phone right now is Scott Wright, Oklahoma State football beat writer. He's in Tulsa today. And Scott, let's talk first about uh, Demontre Hurst, the uh, commitment to the Cowboys who switched last minute and has now signed with the Sooners. Were the Cowboys caught off guard by this? You know, yes and no. Um, Demontre, after he committed, was uh, had, had already scheduled a visit to uh, to Miami, and uh, had kind of uh, kind of told Oklahoma State that that was the, the team that was kind of leading for it for uh, for him, and and Oklahoma State was able to talk him out of taking that visit. Then there came some rumors that he might be going to Tennessee, and and so they uh, I think they had an idea that that this guy wasn't 100% sold. I think uh, I think the visit to Oklahoma probably surprised them a little bit. And then, um, you know, then uh, as as we got past the weekend, it seemed pretty evident that they uh, that they knew they might be losing him whenever they came through with a with a scholarship offer to Midwest City's Tim Flanders. Um, uh, obviously, trying to get him to play cornerback, and that didn't work out for him. Uh, they started looking at some other guys like like Dante Foster at, at Guthrie, uh, and uh, and a few others. But um, I think that they uh, they kind of had a feeling that this uh, that this might happen. And then uh, once he took the visit to Oklahoma, they seemed to, to really be putting a, uh, a, a backup plan in at, at that point. So I don't think it was a total surprise, uh, but, uh, but maybe the fact that he ended up in Norman probably surprised him a little bit. And Scott, what does this do for OSU's recruiting class with the big picture? Where do they go from here? You mentioned Foster. They've also uh, talked about the Bird kid from Florida, who's, I believe, uh, committed to Ole Miss as a, a gray shirt right now. But where does Oklahoma State go from here? You know the, uh, the the talk about Berg has has really kind of died down at this point. It it, it sort of heated up really fast last night, but it doesn't look like there's anything going to happen there. Uh, Foster, I would say, is probably the uh, the number one candidate if they decide to uh, to use that 24th scholarship. Right now, there's a, there's a good chance that they won't uh, that they won't sign anybody else. Uh, maybe try to uh, you know they could get uh, try to get Foster to uh, to to walk on with the promise of a scholarship. In uh, in 2010, or or even gray shirt, and and uh, and come in as a freshman uh, a year from now. Um, but uh, it's hard to say exactly what's going to happen right now. But uh, as far as I know, there hasn't been any any contact today with Dante Foster. So I uh, I kind of get the feeling that this might this 23 might be uh, might be the final number we see at the end of the day. All right, Scott. Two that the Cowboys got today from Tulsa Union, Tracy Moore and Jeremy Smith. You were there for their signing today. Talk, set the scene for us a little bit. What what was that like at Union and those two guys picking Oklahoma State? Uh, you know, it was uh, it was it was strange because you know every uh, every signing ceremony I've ever been to was uh, was you know uh, maybe maybe a couple of people are, are signing to go places and, and Tulsa Union had uh, everybody from every sport to a signing today. They had soccer players and uh, and and swimmers and wrestlers. They had uh, uh, tables that ran the length of the uh, of the basketball court. Down there for everybody to come in and uh, and and watch everybody sign. So it uh, it was uh, probably the longest signing ceremony I've ever been to. And uh, and you know what, Tulsa Union is is putting out a lot of uh, a lot of Division One football players too. They had uh, a guy going to Colorado, a guy going to Arkansas, a lot of guys going around. So it uh, it wasn't uh, just a, a big OSU party with Tracy Moore and and uh, and Jeremy Smith, but uh, but both of those guys uh, talked about how. Uh, you know how relieved they were to uh, to kind of get this all over with. For for Tracy Moore, it was uh, it was a lot of drama in a you know just a, a two or three week period of time after he had made made his initial decision uh, to commit to Oklahoma State, and then Auburn came in and and uh, and all of that. And uh, with Jeremy Smith, he had committed uh, you know not too long after signing day last year, and been committed for almost a full year, and had been uh, trying to uh, fight off coaches trying to to pull him away for uh, for quite a while. So. Uh, both of them were uh, were pretty satisfied to uh, to get it over with. And Scott, not only are these guys big uh, pieces in the in-state recruiting puzzle for Oklahoma State, but they're they're big in the overall scheme of things. Uh, what kind of impact can guys like Moore and Smith uh, have for the Cowboys? You know, Smith, it's going to be uh, you know probably a year or two before we start talking about him again. Obviously, because of the depth that Oklahoma State has at running back. Obviously, Kendall, Kendall Hunter will be a junior next year. His uh, his top two backups, Bo Johnson and, and Keith Tostin, will be seniors. So as those guys start to cycle out of the program, you'll see <clears throat> excuse me, you'll see Jeremy get an, a a better chance to to come in and compete for uh, some playing time. Scott. Now with Tracy Moore, uh, there's uh, there's a really good chance that we'll see him on the field some uh, potentially this fall because he's uh, 
kind of a unique player that uh, in this system that they don't really have a guy like him that uh, that can uh, be kind of a versatile guy, do do some different things. They can line him up in the slot, line him up at tight end, even line him up in type a uh, fullback or H back type of role. So I think that uh, that Moore will be a guy that uh, you know he, he might end up redshirting this year, but there's probably the potential is there for him to uh, to to try to get some action, especially uh, you know they don't have a uh, a scholarship fullback on campus right now. Uh, so, uh, so that opportunity is there if he if he wants to do that. And Brandon Pettigrew is going to tight end, so they uh, they need some uh, some help in that kind of a role, and uh, and he could be the guy to come in and fill it. Scott, you mentioned the drama surrounding Tracy Moore of late. Uh, a lot of that drama came from Auburn and some former Cowboy assistants. Uh, talk a little bit about not only the pull at Moore, but we also hear that maybe Jeremy Smith had some last minute action from Auburn. How did that all play into things? Yeah, well, it was it was surprising because Smith really kind of kept it quiet that uh, that Auburn had had come in and was talking to him. You know, whenever Curtis Looper left, I talked to him uh, later on that uh, that same weekend, and and he said, no, it doesn't matter. I'm uh, I'm I've always wanted to be a cowboy, and I'm going to be a cowboy, and uh, and that's really kind of uh, kind of the uh, the phrase that he lived by, and that was that was the truth. Um, but but he he did get into it a little bit today. How. How uh, how Looper had, had come back around and tried to uh, tried to sway him toward Auburn again, and uh, and he he um, you know he he turned him away and and uh, he said that he kind of became uh, an Oklahoma State recruiter toward the end trying to to keep Tracy Moore in Orange and uh, and that uh, obviously worked out pretty well too. And Scott, talk about just the uh, general havoc that Auburn's coaching staff has uh, had on recruiting, uh, not only in Oklahoma but really in the region. They've got uh, Trooper Taylor and Curtis Looper, like we mentioned. They also got uh, Gus Malzahn, the offensive coordinator from Tulsa, down there. And, and Gene Chizik's always had a, a reputation as being a good recruiter. Yeah, you know what? They've uh, they've done a really good job. It's been uh, it's been kind of unfortunate uh, in some instances for for Oklahoma State, but um, but Auburn's been able to uh, to to get in on some uh, some big name players. Uh, they were in the Reuben Randall sweepstakes for a little while. Bryce Brown. Uh, they could be in on him as, as the number one running back, number number one player in the country, according to rivals. Uh, they also, uh, I guess, kind of got in the mix for, for David Oku out of Carl Albert there for a little while. Uh, as far as Oklahoma State is concerned, we mentioned Moore. Um, Randall had uh, had scheduled a visit to, to Oklahoma State prior to uh, to Trooper Taylor leaving. And... Uh, and and then uh, as soon as Taylor was gone, uh, he you know changed his mind about coming to, to Stillwater. Um, Tyreek Rollison, a quarterback out of Sulphur Springs, Texas, had uh, been strongly strongly looking at Oklahoma State as possibly as the second quarterback in this class. And uh, and now he's ended up committed to uh, to Auburn. Looks like he'll probably uh, most likely end up at a junior college anyway. But um, but uh, Taylor and uh, and Looper were able to. Uh, to, to really have a uh, you know kind of make their mark on uh, on recruiting in this part of the country, even though they had uh, they had moved on to uh, to Auburn. All right, Scott. Thanks for your time. We appreciate it a bunch. Scott will continue following all the signing day coverage involving Oklahoma State. You'll want to check out his coverage tomorrow in the Oklahoma and stay right here with News OK for more signing day coverage.